What's going on guys, Kamikaze Kid here, and today we're looking at the new Finance and Felony update on GTA 5 Online. So, for starters, we have to go to the Dynasty 8 Executive sponsored advert. So, we just print up our phone for that and we enter the site. And as you can see, we have four locations we can choose for our um, Executive CEO headquarters. These are going to be a new way of making money on GTA 5 Online. So, you see here, we're just going across the different types of ones we can afford. So, Maze Bank West is actually the cheapest one out of four available. You can basically buy any of these banks and or insurance broker headquarters. There's the Arcadius. There's another Maze Bank, a larger one below that, which is at the value of 4 million. I think the only thing you're really paying for is the view. They all seem to have the same interiors from what I've seen. For starters, I will probably just use the buy for 1 million on the Maze Bank because it's the cheapest one to do and I don't have a lot of money left myself. And the other thing is you can actually do up these interiors which will cost more money, unfortunately. So therefore, if you leave everything default, it'll only cost a million, but I'll just show you quickly here, just different types of ones you can choose. Each one gets more expensive as you go up. They're all different um, designs for your interior. And it really depends what you're going for. Certain decor will change not only the layout and the, the views, but it'll also change what your personnel will wear. And for the purpose of just having a personnel, it's down to you which one you prefer. For the organization, you can name it whatever you want. That won't change the cost. The color and the font, that will not change the cost. As you can see, there's 13 fonts to choose from. Each one depends on what type of name you really want to go for. And you can change it to whatever color you want. Unfortunately, I can't see red here, but I believe red is available for certain decors. So I would suggest trial and error to see which ones you can get. So as you can see here, tapping onto the an organization, you can change the name. And I'm going to call mine the Bake Sale Boys. Um, just to name it the, the crew I roll with on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to leave that at default black probably. But I'll just show you real quick here the different colors you can give it. And this basically is just as you enter your CEO building, this will be on the background where your secretary will be sitting. And if you want, you can add a gun locker or a safe. These um, go behind your PC desk in your main office. And they're basically like little hidden spots. And you can actually leave your guns or money in the safe. And it's cool the way it just builds up. Like most of these things aren't really necessary. You only really have to spend a million at minimum to uh, become a CEO because this is the cheapest way to do it. If you just stay as a CEO and just buy for a million without adding on all these extra things. Accommodation allows you to kind of stay over here. Like it adds like a sleeping quarters. And I think that therefore means you'll be able to start your missions from here and wake up here. But I can't confirm that yet either. But yeah, I'm just going to buy this. Uh, it costs a million, so I have two million left. You can set a waypoint to the CEO building. And from there, you can just drive to it, enter the building and get started with your missions. Also to confirm, you can only own one CEO building at a time. As you can see, I am now the CEO and I'll get a call from my assistant. Hey, I want to introduce myself. I'm your new assistant. Just arrived at the office. Looks great. I'm settling in. SecuroServe updated your CEO privileges, so you've got access to their special cargo network. When you come by, I'll get you all set up. With the Finance of Felony update, they have also updated a lot of the travel and transport. So I'll just show you all the updates here for the new cars and vehicles you can get. If I go to the flight one, you can see that the Volatus and the Nimbus are two new vehicles that have been added. The Volatus can be basically bought and stored on top of your building because most of your CEO buildings will have a helipad. And this is handy because you can escape to the roof and then just fly off in your new helicopter. The Nimbus, I think, is a reference to Harry Potter with the Nimbus 2000 broom. And that's for a million nine hundred thousand for that. But there are some new flying vehicles in the war stock, which I will show you now, as well as new stuff. So the, we also have the Brigade, which is like a heavily armored car, which can be used for the missions that you need. And for a million one hundred thousand, it isn't cheap, but it's a very handy vehicle if you plan on doing the missions. An updated cargo bop has been added, uh, as well as the actual cargo bop to buy both storing very large amount of people in them and the Carbog Bob Jetsam which is also new a new design to it basically I think it's the exact same thing as the normal Cargo Bob but for a little bit extra. Now we go to the Dock Tees section and we have an update here as you can see the Tugboat for 1,250,000 and I think Rockstar have forgotten to add in the description as you can see placeholder tug description they still have to add in like information on that so maybe that's because this whole finance and felony update hasn't been made proper yet and therefore we could expect more real soon from them and as you can see here the southern autos there is a Bravado Rumpo Custom for 130,000 and that is the only thing here that has been part of the finance and felony update under the normal cars section and finally we look at the new legendary motorsports available and as you can see there are five new cars added, which are the Picasso Reaper, the Vapid FMJ, the Grotty Bestia GTS, 
the Benefactor XLS and the Ennis Windsor drop. With the most expensive car obviously being the FMJ and now probably one of the more bought cars over the Pegasi Reaper. Plus the FMJ seems to be the more customizable car than the Reaper. We also got the Enzo Windsor drop which has the ability to drop its roof but we'll look at these cars now in detail. So first we have the Pegasi Reaper for 1,595,000 which is probably about a million less in cost than we thought it'd be. The interior isn't as nice as we thought it would have been with the wheel, but at the same time, it's still kind of really good. Um, we got all the colors you can choose, and you can see here the top speed acceleration. Now we got the FMJ, which is a Vapid vehicle, which is the more expensive one. And as you can see here, the vehicle stats in detail. And you can actually see the back of the car, the engine, which looks pretty slick. Now what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm actually going to compare these two vehicles, which are meant to be the fastest vehicles in the game, to each other to see just how fast they really are in comparison. So as you can see here, guys, the two vehicles are virtually identical in stats. But I'm pretty sure that if someone could test this out on a track or do a video in regards to that, then there will definitely be a big difference. But I would suggest people buy the FMJ over the Reaper, simply due to the aestheticness when upgraded fully. It's pretty cool options you can add to it, customization-wise. But you can't argue with the design on the Reaper. It is something else of a car. It actually does look like such a super sports car with a big sleek design on the front. So we got the Grotti Bestia GTS. And as you can see here, for 610,000, it's actually a pretty decent car to buy. Has a decent high speed and acceleration, therefore it's probably a cheaper and handier option to choose over the other two cars. Next is the Benefactor XLS. Now this car not only has cool colors you can choose from, but it also has a regular and armored version. There are previous other benefactors in the game that I would prefer over the design of this car, but simply because it's a new car with a DLC, there's no harm in uh, purchasing this car if you really like large cars that you can fit your team in. And for the armored version for missions that are to come, this will probably be one of the more better cars to choose from in the DLC. Finally, we got the Enos Windsor drop. And what's really cool about this car is the fact that the roof can pretty much drop. And as you can see, the stats are really high on it. The, the way the roof drops down is pretty cool. The interior of the car has a nice beigey color front and pretty good stats too. Really fast four seater, I have to say, for this game. That's all the vehicles pretty much that have been added to the game. So let's actually look proper now at the CEO section of this. So before we continue, I just want to show you that from here, you can actually see your completed thing and you can re-renovate your bank. So my Maze Bank West, which was for a million, I'm not going to update it, but I'm just showing you the extra costs that it could be to just fully upgrade it. So given the nature that it costs a million to just upgrade to Power Broker Ice, um, you can't upgrade your personnel. You can switch for free between them. Um, the organization, um, you, it doesn't matter if you change the font or the color, but the second you change the name, that's when you'll run into problems. So to change the name, it would cost 250,000. For the gun locker, it'll cost 520,000. And for the safe, it'll cost 335,000. And to add accommodation, it's 795,000. This means it costs almost 3 million just to fully upgrade the cheapest CEO building in GTA 5 Online. And with that said, let's go and see what our building looks like. Also from here, you can see before we drive there, that you cannot enter passive mode when you are an active CEO. Now you can disable being a CEO at any time you want. This will not make your CEO building disappear. It just means you can't do CEO missions until you re-go back into your building and activate them. But as of now, because I bought the CEO building, I am an active CEO. This means I can't enter passive mode and enemies can kill me, but I can also kill them. Also, other people who are CEO, if you can see here on the screen now, destroy special cargo belonging to organizations to earn cash, ammo, and RP. If I find a red marker on the map like this, then I can go and attack someone else's cargo. If I destroy it, I get bonus cash, ammo, and RP. This is handy for people who aren't CEOs and just want to gain some of the advantages of this update. Okay, as you can see here, I pulled outside Maze Bank, which normally just would have been an aesthetic building. But now, as you can see, there's a blue glowing uh, circle that I can enter. And this, I own this. This is my CEO building for 1 million. So to become a CEO, it will cost you 1 million as the cheapest price to go. And as well as that, you might need a bit of money to do warehouse missions. But here we go, into the Maze Bank for the first time ever. Welcome to your office, sir. I'm your new executive assistant. I'm here to make life as easy as possible and to help this business run efficiently. The recreational area slash breakout space, going through to the executive suite. We're all set up to grow this company with everything a modern executive could want. There's the boardroom, 
The panels are easily swapped, so you can install a gun locker or a safe whenever you want to. It's possible to knock through here and add some personal quarters, somewhere to lie down, take some me time, look at the Dynasty 8 site for details. Most important of all, though, is your executive terminal. Here's where you'll access the Securo Serve special cargo network to take this operation to another level. I'll tell you all about it when you first log in. So that's it. Take a look around, get settled in. I'm at the front desk or on the end of the phone whenever you need me. Now, as you can see here, we're just going to enter through our elevator. There's four elevators you can choose from to exit. And as you can see here, this is the main hub. And before we continue on to look at it, I just want to show you the Securo CEO stuff that's available. So I can hire associates. I can do management, choose what they wear and who's going to be my associates. VIP work, VIP challenges, CEO abilities, which are special abilities I have as an organizer. So I can actually request helicopters, um, testosterone, bull shark drop, ammo, armor, ghost organization, which makes us invisible during these missions, which is pretty handy when people are trying to steal our stuff. Bribe authorities so that we don't get into shit. And spectate associates, which means I can see what my friends are doing on their missions and judge and range them. We also have CEO of vehicles we can get, which is pretty cool, but some of them we got to buy, so we have to, you know, first unlock these vehicles, like buy them, and then we can actually have them arrive for us. And we can retire CEO contract anytime. Retiring CEO work does not mean that we give up our building, and it doesn't mean that we lose any more money. It actually just means that we can't do any CEO missions while disactivated. And the second we want to activate them again, we just go through these front doors to the left of our terminal and activate a mission, thus making a CEO again. So you can hire associates from here and offer to anybody or your crew or friends or strangers. So as you can see, the management, we can um, rename our organization from here, the style, um, activate if we can shoot ourselves friendly for on and off. Would suggest this off anyways. Again, you can also choose what uniforms they wear. You can see some here in my... CEO styles so these are just the different kind of cloud and CEOs can wear again you don't have to wear these these are just options that are free that you can use um, like immediately but I will just probably just use my leather jacket and t-shirt because I to be honest hate wearing shirts in real life and can't stand wearing them in game but sure each to their own but you can see here all these different ones some of them look cool some of them look silly some of them match different tastes of people I guess it really depends what you're going for Again, I'll just use my own because I'm more comfortable in my own skin. From this section of the office decor, you can actually preview what a new place will look like before buying it. So I could potentially look at these different colors, etc. before buying it and then try to decide between them. Or I can just go to the site and do it from there. But personally, I'd probably preview them here first if I were you, just so that you can get a better idea of what ones you can use. Okay, so I'll just go through the front doors just to show you around the office, etc. and what I basically oh. have. So as you can see, we have the C our associate here, executive, and do you can do she can do different things for us. So for example, we can pick Pegasi um, vehicles. We can pick Pegasus vehicles that she um, will recommend to us. Um, they will cost money, and again, we will have to own them first before we can uh, pick any of them. As you can see here, I only own a stretch limo, and so there's a lot of options I don't have. But we can ask her to make pick up one of our personal vehicles from our garage and it'll be waiting outside for us when we leave. Which is pretty handy because sometimes um, because there's no garage below this thing, it's really handy having that option. As well here you can see that um, she can give us free snacks, which I love. I love a woman that can feed me. So when it says free, you just keep tapping it and then when you've bought too many, it'll say full. So this is actually like a free start um, within the grasp of your CEO building. So I recommend whenever you're going on a mission to buy all these because most of these can um, give you energy when you use them. What I normally do to eat quickly in this game online is I set one of my actions to be like eat or drink. So then when I double tap the analog sticks on my Xbox controller, he'll, my character will basically just eat or drink whatever it was and heal off it. So it's a very quick way of healing without actually having to enter menus. As you can see behind her, we actually have the Bake Sale Boys logo written in font. Got some nice seating areas and paintings on the walls over here. And as you can see here, we have the uh, green juice, which apparently has been confirmed to heal you now that when you're in your apartments or your CEO buildings. As you can hear behind me, our executive will actually speak little phrases in the background on the phone, adding to some realism to this whole situation. 
as you can see over here we have three computers which we can like you know and we can sit down at them so this is kind of like your associates can like go on the web here i know they can all go on their phones for it but it's kind of handy having these here it just kind of makes it look like a big work area and you can access the site from here and all the usual stuff which is pretty handy yeah, so if you want to, like, for example, be in the Rockstar Editor and catch some cool scenes or create some cool stories, you could probably have your three associates sit down here while you're kind of, like, you're, you're being the boss and walking around. You know, you can create, you can record some pretty cool stuff in this whole scenario, which will actually lead me on to the next part over here where you can see this warm-up of the different areas we own with the warehouses, which I'll get to when we're at the PC over there. So you could probably record, for example, you know, um, your character in the Rockstar Editor giving out a about business and is they're going to kill something or you know planning something big with the missions and set up in the rockstar editor next let's take a look at the view there's actually a pretty amazing view for the cheapest building you can actually see over the hollywood area there the um oh and as you can see uh some guy blown by in a helicopter it's a pretty cool view it just shows you how high up we actually are oh oh, oh jesus <laughs> damn like trying to destroy our personal vehicles down there yeah, so you'll get a lot of this in the game as well, just like people wrecking havoc. But like, as you can see, bar the destruction that we see beyond us, this is actually a pretty amazing view for the cheapest thing you can buy. So this is why I'm recommending it over the other things, because you're really just paying for the view um, oh, and the building, the location of the building too. Um, again, I can take wine here. So there's various drinks around that um, you can drink now here, which includes wine, gin and whiskey. And as you can see, we have the TV here. And a cool new feature is the Don't Cross the Line video game, which I won't be able to show, by the way, because I don't have enough people to play it. You actually need, I think, two or three players to play this game. But you can watch the TV from here, all the usual stuff, has all the usual channels, as well as the security cameras to the various cameras that your building has, and as well as that, being able to spectate players and all that usual stuff. Now we just move over here to the last remaining areas to show. Here you can see that the accommodation is still another area we can't access. But what we can access is the whiskey, the gin, and the radio. So we do have a radio here we can like put on, show, have a party, little mini straws, etc. I guess it's disappointing you can't actually, you know, make drinks in the game. But there's so much stuff that they could have added that's just really hard to upgrade with a single update. Um, I, think, I think gin is the newest drink that's available to get. It would have been cool to have more different drinks and for them to give you a different kind of no views etc okay so what's going to happen here now is we are going to buy warehouses this is the second part of this update so basically when you buy a ceo building the purpose of it is to be basically the hub of all your work so this is where you meet up and plan missions so becoming ceo allows you to unlock this purchasing of warehouses which is again buying property um, but it's not just buying property where you stay over it's buying property where you're going to store stock and sell it so you're going to basically become a salesperson a crooked salesperson so basically what you do here is you pick what one you want to buy so you have options of small medium and large stock obviously if you can st fully store 111 crates in the large one you're looking at probably earning anywhere from a million to probably 1.5 to even probably even 5 million in value i'm not really too sure what the max value is that you can earn from doing this but i can confirm that 10 crates unlocks you one hundred thousand dollars, which therefore would mean that 111 crates would be probably around 1.5 million and all you're going to do is you're going to pick one of these to buy and then do missions off it which i will show you so again, if you're on your own and you have no one else, I actually would suggest buying the small and cheapest location you can. So if you're paying for the extra price, it's for the location. The 3,500,000 is probably the dearest, the Darnell Brothers Warehouse, but that's located in the center of the city, which is pretty handy for doing missions next to your CEO building because all your stock will just go straight there. Obviously, the further out you go, the cheaper it gets because it's in a very bad location. Or, you know, if you're buying a small warehouse, you know, you're going to store small things. But storing 16 crates would probably see you getting anywhere from 100,000 in value the second you do it. So I'd say I would recommend buying a small warehouse, storing 16 crates by doing five to six missions. And basically for them five to six missions, you're looking at probably 100 to $150,000 in value, which is pretty good. So if you continue to do that on your own, you're, you'll get there in no time. The cheapest large one to buy is actually for 1,900,000. So if you want to buy a large area which can get you to the value of probably 1.5 million in value fully filled out, you're looking at paying 1,900,000, which is the wholesale of furniture area located in Cypress Flats, which is the large 111 crates. So as you can see here, the second you buy the location, you're given the option to fill it. 
So what we actually have to do now is buy one, two or three crates and fill this entire warehouse with stock. So this will actually cost more money. So we're looking at paying $18,000 just for three crates of jewelry. That means the total cost of fully filling out this warehouse will mean we're paying $666,000 just to fill this warehouse alone. Which means if in fact that we only earn 1.5 million or near and around that area, we're only earning 1 million in total from doing this entire thing. Which is why I suggest if you buy a large warehouse, do do this with your friends. But start small first, as I will show you now the cost of doing this alone. And basically now we got to go and collect the jewelry ourselves, bring it to the warehouse. So this is where I said the location comes in handy. If your building is very close to the best warehouse, so buying the best building location and best warehouse location is probably ideal. So the next step is to exit the office. So just to confirm here that you actually don't exit the office through these two side doors, they're just blank doors. You actually just exit the office from any of the four elevators. So the four brown doors cannot be used. So you can exit on foot, you can exit to the roof, or you can exit on the ground. I would recommend just exiting to the ground, but for the purpose of showing you everything, I exit to the roof just to show you what is actually up here. This doesn't look good. They were meant to bring the goods in by ship, but the ship isn't moving. You'll need to take out the crew before bringing the goods to the warehouse. So as you can hear, I actually have to do a mission now in order to get the goods to my warehouse. So this is where the mission value comes in. The whole CEO thing is just basically mission after mission after mission to earn money. So it is missions that's earning you the money as opposed to easiness. So we do have to actually do work. But it gets easier with time if you buy certain things like upgrades um, or get a crew together. So as you can see, I just get the parachute here and we have to go out to sea. So you can actually jump off your building. You also have a helicopter up there if it spawns. If it doesn't spawn, I would suggest buying a helicopter as you can just fly it to the locations, making it easier. And after a few attempts at this, I still die. And I only had 10 seconds left to, to collect the thing. You are time doing this. So again, I do always suggest to, if you're on your own to do smaller warehouse stuff. Um, so I actually fail. I've lost 18,000 in value. You do gain RP for this, which is good, but you, I haven't deli delivered any special cargo. So I've actually lost like $18,000 in value of stock. So back at the warehouse, you'll actually see here that um, each time you collect stuff for the warehouse, if you fail or you don't fail, you'll actually get this statistics page showing you how much free space is in it, how much special cargo is being held, and actually how much earnings you have in that warehouse as a whole. Well, you can only own one CEO building, you can actually own five warehouses. So this is actually a good opportunity that if you, like me, already bought a large warehouse, do go and buy a small one for yourself and then just fill it up and earn 100,000 each day or whatever. And eventually just it'll kind of be a quicker way of you getting money. Um, because at the end of the day, it's quicker filling up a smaller warehouse than a large one. So as you can see here, while I failed, I still have 0% held because we did not get any stock. And this time instead of jewelry, there's three crates of narcotics that we can buy. So I'm actually going to do this mission and see if I can do it successfully. It gets harder each time. So for this mission, I just actually have to collect the narcotics from just outside of an area here. As you can see, it's in a big gigantic truck. And for this one, I just have to deliver the three crates already inside the truck. So this is handy. So sometimes, like I said, you'll get the easy option. Sometimes you won't. So in this case, because it's narcotics, I actually get to just drive this all the way to my warehouse. The hard thing is if somebody steals this on me. So while I'm driving this, I'm available on the map for other people to see me. So they could come up and just destroy this and destroy and it gives them bonus money and RP. I do not want this to happen. So one thing I can do is go into ghost mode into the interaction menu. A good way of being able to do this um, professionally, I guess, would be to just keep the option up and ready. So when you think people are nearby, when you check in your map, just activate ghost organization when they're getting a bit too close for your liking. So for now, I can just keep it at the ready and when I'm ready to activate it. So I basically get three minutes to be able to be invisible on the map to people and deliver this to my location. It did cost me, I think like $12,000 to do this. So again, this is an extra cost each time and you know, overall will add up. So this makes less of a profit each time you do this. But still, making a million is hard. And again, I cannot confirm 111 crates getting you the maximum amount of money. So as you can see here, I eventually get to the warehouse, which is located on the far side. And that is it. Cargo delivered. Basically, you can now see your warehouse. So this is your warehouse. And each time you get cargo back, it'll store in these racks. There's a lot of racks to fill up on a large warehouse. And even less cargo needed when it's a small warehouse. 
that a total stock of special cargo held in a warehouse can be sold to an interesting buyer at any stage. So again, we just use the ad hoc computer here, which is a special computer designed just for this warehouse um, for buying and selling. And from this workbench, we can actually upgrade our vehicles that we do these missions with, so like the helicopters that we'll see later on, the planes and the vehicle I was just in. Well done, boss. The warehouse is filling up. You can sell stock at any time by accessing the network. Prices depend on negotiating position, though. So the more stock you have, the better the price you'll get. Holding is risky. So find a level you're comfortable with and sell there. Well, she says this on the phone that holding is risky. I don't know if this confirms that, you know, our stock can be stolen or our stock can, like, you know, uh, depreciate with time. I hope this isn't true, but um, it hasn't even been confirmed or talked about yet. So hopefully that's not the case and I'm just reading into the phone call too much. Um, so as you can see here, these are the upgrades we can do. Delivery truck, armor upgrade for $230,000 and bulletproof tires for 95000 You know, again, like if you can upgrade all these, this means every time you go to do this mission, it'll, these missions, it'll just be easier. But this really depends on if you run into scenarios with these. It's all down to you. But I'll actually just look at the computer now and show you the value of the money that we have for this. So as you can see, we've got three crates of 111. So the value of the crates are 36,000. I've confirmed to you that um, when you get 10 to 11 crates, you actually have 100,000, which is a big jump from three if you add that up. Um, but if you have a whole warehouse, there will be a probably bonus money for the thing. But as you can see, selling one crate versus selling three crates gets you less money. So it is wise to sell everything at once. The more you sell in bulk, the more money you'll get. And we're outside the warehouse now. So obviously, if we want to rinse and repeat this, we're going to have to go all the way back to our CEO building, which the quickest way, again, is just, you know, steal a fast car or, you know, call your mechanic and get your car delivered to you or your bicycle or whatever. So guys, that has been the finance and felony update. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. It really helps us out. And subscribe if you want more awesome videos like this and I'll get back to it soon. But anyways, thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you did, you know what you have to do. Like, subscribe, join the Kamikaze tribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one.